In this video, we're gonna talk about the website menu bar, which is this menu you see running across the top of my page. I'm gonna talk just some general tips, some overview of some things you can do with your menu bar to try to make your website easier to navigate. So that is the main purpose of the menu bar. It's to make users easier to navigate your website to find different information. Uh, so here's my example website, Golf Practice Guides. It's a golf instruction website. Now this has to do with my theme, the fact that I have this top section here and then I've got the menu sitting underneath it. Different website themes are gonna have a different header layout. So this is known as the header section. Uh, it's the above the fold content. So it's the initial content somebody sees on your website before they start scrolling down the page. When they start scrolling down the page, that's called below the fold. So this is above the fold, also known as the header. And specifically, this is the menu navigation bar here. All right, so we've got the logo in the header. Now, my theme is the Avada theme. I'll link to it below if you wanna check out the Avada theme. Uh, but it's a premium theme I paid $60 for a couple years ago and I use it for most of my websites. Uh, but one of the header styles was to have a logo here and then have a button over here uh, so I can give like a call to action to try to get them to join my golf challenge. And then it puts the menu bar underneath there. Now as they start scrolling down, I also set up a sticky menu so that the menu sticks up here at the top of the page. So you can see as they're scrolling down the page, that the menu's still there. It gives them something to navigate. If they decide they're done reading my article and they wanna check out my menu, boom, there's my menu. So that's how I've set up my website. There's other ways to do it as well. If you're on a mobile device, then your menu actually will shrink up and it'll have the little hamburger, uh, three lines on top of each other. All right, so here's an example. All I did was shrunk down my browser size to try to imitate what it would look like on like an iPad or an iPhone and my website's responsive, so it changes based on what screen size you're on, and that's what you want with websites these days. You want a responsive website, and that's something else to monitor how your menu looks on different platforms. So on desktop, I have a full width menu that shows. On mobile, it scrunches up and it gets this little hamburger symbol here that they can click on, and that produces the drop-down menu. So now they have these different menu boxes, it's put the little arrow symbol here, letting them know there's more subtopics or sub menus underneath. So they can click that to open up all these little sub menus. So that's what it's gonna look like on mobile and on iPads or on you know little tablets that people are using. So you can play around with the screen size by you know dragging it and you're gonna see how things change as you drag it. So if we drag it all the way back open, at some point there's a break point. So about right here, it goes from being like a mobile style menu to a normal desktop style menu. That's known as like the break point. Now it still is too small of a screen for everything to fit though. So my menu still breaks down into two lines. If somebody had this specific screen size they were looking at my website on, but for most people they're using a normal laptop or desktop computer screen. So my menu should fit all on one line and look good. So that's just a few tips right off the bat of how to style your menu and how it looks on different you know, mobile, tablet versus desktop. Now, as far as navigation goes, what types of things should you put in your menu? For me, I've tried various things. You know, it's it really comes down to you what you think your most important pages are. That's what I would put in your menu bar because if people are scrolling on your website for the first time, they land on a specific blog post like this one, the four golf exercises to strengthen the core muscles, you know, they're gonna come here, they're gonna see your social shares, they're gonna see different advertisements you might be running on your website, whether they're your own or whether you've got Google ads. They're gonna be reading your website, seeing email forms, videos. So there's all this content you can throw onto a blog post for them to see and to click on to try to get them to move around your website. But the main place they're gonna move around is probably your menu bar because that's the staple that's on every single page they go to. This menu appears on every page. So you want your most important pages that you're trying to direct people to up in your menu bar. So for me, I used to have my about page, I used to have a start here page, uh, contact page, you know, all the basic pages you think of that are like staple pages when you create a website. But what I found is, you know, I really would rather put my product pages in my menu bar now, and that's the route I've been going, either product pages or email captures, so one of the goals of having a website is you get this traffic to it, they read your website, you wanna to try to capture them to your email list. So I embed email forms into my blog post like this one. They can download the six best muscle exercises for golfers. 
They can put their name, email address, boom, click the button. They automatically get the guide. They can download it. But in return, I get their email address. So they become a member of my email list. Why that's important, you know, you don't want all this traffic coming to your website and leaving. Otherwise, it's it's worthless traffic. It does nothing for your business financially if you're trying to, you know, run a website for a business and try to make sales, get customers. Having an email capture opportunity gets them onto an email list. Now you have control of that person in terms of remarketing to them. You might not never see them again if you don't capture them to your email list, but with an email list, you can send out all your new blog posts that you write. So every week I'm publishing new articles, I'm sending those out to my email list so they can come back to my website a second, third, fourth, fifth time rather than them just disappearing and never coming back. So that's the power of an email list. So what you wanna do is probably have a special lead capture page. So in my case, I give away a 15 golf drill PDF file that they can download that gives them 15 ideas of what golf drills to do to practice their golf game. So that's linked right here in my menu bar called 15 drills. It's basically a dedicated page that's all about getting the opt-in. So when they come here, there's nothing else on this page other than you know a little intro of what they're downloading and then the form. So they can enter their name, email address, and click download. So it's a straightforward page, there's no distractions. I did put the menu down here at the bottom in the footer, but I took the menu away on this page because I want the sole focus to be this form and what they're getting of value so that they see this offer that I'm offering them and they take action, they subscribe to my email list. So that's my dedicated landing page for capturing emails. That's an important page on my website. That's gonna grow my email list and help me make more sales through email marketing. So I threw that up here in my menu bar. Now you're also gonna see these different product links. So I have my break 70 plan, my break 80 plan, break 90 plan. These are three different products I built. Short game, indoors. Uh, we've got actually a products tab that drops down to show all kinds of different products again. And then we've got the login. So if they need to go to the login page to log into their account, if they're a customer, they can do so. So I deem these as my most important pages I wanna get people to. I want to get them to my products to try to convert them into a customer so I can make money, or I wanna get them into my email list so that I can eventually sell them down the road with email marketing. Now, I also know the importance of having your blog content in your menu bar, so I created my own menu tab over here called Golf Instruction, and this is the different categories I have on my blog. So if they wanna learn about the golf swing, they can just open up this menu tab here, and it's gonna pull open all the different blog posts that I've ever written related to the golf swing. So here's how I can keep them on my website, reading more of my content, looking at more blog posts of mine, and that's gonna build that trust so they start to see me as a resource, and then they're gonna come back time and time again. All right, so that's a little breakdown of how I do it. I pretty much keep it simple. I keep those three things in my menu. We've got the email opportunity to get them to my email list. We've got the customer opportunity to get them buying a product. And then we've got the blog post opportunity. So if they're not interested in joining my email list or buying a product from me, maybe they're just interested in reading more content on my website to get to know me better, to get more helpful information to help their golf game. So that's where I have that as my very first item. So that's the very first thing they see in my menu that they can check out all these different topics and blog articles. But hopefully after they've clicked around some of my blog articles, Again, since my menu shows up on every page, it gives them multiple opportunities to still check out my products or my email capture page. And then again, my theme here lets me add this little top section that's got the start our challenge button. Some websites have that little button option you can throw into your menu or one of these turns into like a button. It really just depends on what website theme you're running. So that's an overview of the navigation menu, just some tips and how I like to do my menus, how you can do yours. And then again, we talked about how the sizing changes. So when you're setting up your menu, make sure you're checking it for mobile and desktop to make sure it looks presentable. All right, thanks so much for watching today's video, giving me your time and attention. I'll see you guys in my next videos. Don't forget to check out my playlist if you're still curious about other topics on my YouTube channel. Yo, check this out. So if you type in asknickfoy.teachable.com, asknickfoy.teachable.com, when you hit enter, it's gonna open up my resource library. So I've been working on tons of training video modules and I put them together in these different courses. And you can go over here to asknickfoy.teachable.com 
and you can learn how to start a website that makes money. So this is called Profitable Blogger. You can also learn how to make money from social media like Pinterest. You can also learn real estate investing. So these are three ways I currently make money right now. I'm making six, seven thousand dollars a month. I've already come out with a video showing you how I was making 1400 a week a little while back and we're on pace to eventually get to 10k a month passive income through websites, through social media and through real estate investing. So these three methods combined, I created these three training courses. You can go here to asknickboy.teachable.com to check them out and I look forward to seeing you guys on the inside when you enroll in them. Yo, before you go, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, Nick Foy TV. If you hover the lower right corner of your video right now, you're going to see the little red subscribe button. When you hover that, it's going to pop up that subscribe button and it would mean a lot. I already appreciate you gave me your time, your attention today. Uh, but if you could also hit that subscribe button, support the channel and uh, smash the like button as they all say in every YouTube video. So smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.